Hi everyone, today's lesson is on arc length, area of a sector, and ratio of areas. So let's get started. Uh, revisiting the formulas for area and circumference of a circle. The formula for the area of a circle is going to be area, oops, here we go, is going to be area of a circle is equal to uh, pi r squared, r being the radius, and let's say my radius was five, you would say the area of your circle is equal to pi times five squared, or that would be 25 pi, and then whatever units of measurement you're using, it would be unit squared because it's five times five. For circumference of a circle, uh, you would say circumference is equal to two times pi times my radius. So the, remember the difference between the area. The area is the space inside, whereas the circumference is the distance walking around your circle, and that's your circumference. And any other polygon, in any polygon, it would be called um, the perimeter, but in a circle, it's called the circumference. So let's say, again, my radius from here to here was five, then radius of five, then my circumference would equal to two times pi times my radius, which is five, and you'd be multiplying that out. Because there's just one value here for the radius and you're doubling it, it's just units times two, which is still units. So that circumference would be 10 pi units and not 10 pi units squared, it'd just be 10 pi units. So area is always unit squared, whereas circumference is just units. So a sector, um, and an arc length of a circle. So an arc length is a distance, the length of this arc. So that right there is an arc length. So it's a portion or a fraction of the circumference. So if I'm talking about arc length, so we call that AL, arc length, it would be a fraction or depending on the degree, right, for this being my central angle, it would be that arc degree, and we'll call it a degree, arc degree over 360 degrees, because that's the distance all the way around the circle, times two pi r. So that's a fraction of the circumference. This is my fraction of, of mean times, of means times, of my circumference, okay? Whereas the area of a sector. Now the sector is a portion. So a sector of a circle is a portion um, enclosed by two radii and an arc. So that's what um, a sector is. So a sector is this space in here, that area in here, okay? So that's what a sector is. So that portion in there is being my sector. Um, the area of a sector, which is then gonna be, instead of the area of the whole circle, it's a fraction of the whole area. So again, to find the area, we would say that's the arc degree over 360, because that's my fraction of the area, which is pi r squared. So in order to find the sector, which is this space inside here, you would say it's the arc degree, which again, if this is theta, let's say this is 50 degrees, this would also be 50 degrees. So it'd be 50 degrees over 360 times pi r squared, depending what r was. Meanwhile, if I wanted to find the length of the sector, which is outside, it's a fraction of my um, circumference, I would say arc degree, so 50 over 360 times two pi r. So in order to find the area and the circumference for each of these circles, okay, so the area of this, let's just say that my radius is r. So we're gonna call our radius r, okay? So if my radius for this circle is r, to find the area, just be pi r squared. My circumference for this circle is just gonna be two pi r, okay? Whereas in this, quantity, this is basically a half of a circle. So it's 180 degrees, let's say it's going through my center. Um, it'd be 100, the sector of that would be 180 out of 360 times pi r squared. So in this case, um, for this formula, you would say, well, that's one half of pi r squared. So that would equal pi r squared divided by two. 
the circumference is going to be um, half of the distance around. So basically 2 pi r divided by 2, which is just pi r. Pi, excuse me, pi r. The twos are going to cancel, so you're just left with pi r. For this shape right here, what we have is um, 120 degrees, so you've got a sector. You want to find that area and circumference for that. So for this one, it would be 120 degrees over 360 times pi r squared. So in this case, 12 divided by 36, that's going to equal pi r squared divided by 3, because that's a third. Likewise, my circumference would equal 2 pi r times, uh, or a third of that, so divided by 3. In this case, we're going to say our do, my sector, this, length, this area shaded, is going to be 90 divided by 360 times pi r squared. So the area is just going to be um, 1 fourth, so my area is going to be pi r squared divided by 4, whereas my circumference is going to be uh, 90 divided by 360 times 2 pi r. Now this right here is going to be divided and you're going to get a fourth, but don't forget this 2 will cancel with this 4, leaving 2 here. So we have pi r divided by 2, and that's going to be my circumference. Um, for this shape right here, I'm looking for n, so I'm looking for n uh, degrees. So that sector is going to be, the area is going to be n degrees over 360 times pi r squared. And likewise, for my circumference, that's going to be n over 360 times 2 pi r. So given the following circles, your job is to find the arc length and also uh, actually just the arc length. Find the arc length. So in order to find the arc length, so we have arc length is equal to my arc degree over 360 degrees times 2 pi r. Because remember, arc length is basically just this length from here to here. It's this outside length. Um, of the arc. So it's going to be arc degree, because this is 360 degrees, remember six central angles have the same measure. So my arc length is going to equal 60 degrees divided by 360 times 2 times pi times my radius, which is 6 in this picture. And so this is going to cancel here. I know that um, 6 will divide into 36, 6 times, but then this 6 will cancel with that 6 as well. So what I'm left with is 2 pi. My arc length is equal to 2 pi. For the arc length for this shape is arc length is going to equal arc degree over 360 degrees times 2 pi r. So arc degree being, again, 60 over 360 times 2 times pi times 9. So again, these are going to cancel and make 6 down here. 6 is going to cancel into being 2 times 3. So I'm just going to um, simplify that. The 2 will cancel with this 2 and leave 1. The 3 will cancel with this 3, with the 9, and make 3. So my arc length is going to equal 3 times pi. So 3 pi. Um, circle O has a radius of 9. So we're going to call this circle O. And for this circle right here, we have circle O. It says it has a radius of 9. And AOB, which I'm going to assume is this AOB, is 120 degrees. So find the length of the arc and the area. So to find the length of the arc, arc length, that's this distance, again, from here to here, which is a fraction of all the way around. So arc length is equal to 2 times pi times r times my arc degree over 360. Again, it's a fraction of the circumference. And so arc degree, so we'll say that's 120 degrees over 360 times 2 times pi times 9. So 12 goes into 36, divides into 36 three times. This 3 will divide into this 9 three times. And 3 times 2 is going to be 6 
pi. So my arc length is 6 pi. To find my area of that sector, okay, you're going to say that's a fraction, which is my arc degree over 360 times pi r squared. So my arc degree, which is 120 degrees over 360 times pi times my radius, which is 9 squared. So I'm just going to say 9 times 9. So again, this is going to cancel, and 12 divides into 36 um, three times. This 3 will cancel into one of these 9s, so now I have 3. So what I have is 3 times 9, which is 27 uh, pi, and this is unit squared because it's 9 times 9. Area is equal to, so that's this area in here, this green shaded area. That's the area is going to be 27 pi units squared, whereas this being a length is just our units. Okay. Um, find the area of the shaded region bounded by xy and arc xy. So basically, I'm looking for this blue shaded region in here. So if you're looking at this, we could have started with this, which we did on a previous slide, where we found the, the sector of this whole shape right here, because we know we're going to say that that's a 90 degree angle. So what's happened here is, because we don't have any other information, um, what's happened is, is you're going to basically find the area of this whole sector right here, but then you're going to take away the area of the triangle, and that's only going to leave you with this blue part. Oops. Which that, with that blue part, okay, let me shade that back in, because that's all I want is this shaded area right here. So it looks to me like I'm going to have to find the area of the whole sector, this being right angle, all of this minus this triangle. So our plan of action is to find the area is going to be the arc degree over 360 uh, times pi r squared minus the area of that triangle. So one half uh, base times height. And remember, to find the area of a triangle, base times height has to be perpendicular. Okay? So to find the area, we're going to say the arc degree is 90 divided by 360 degrees times pi r, r being 10, so that's times 10 times 10, minus the area of the circle, or the area of the triangle right here. That's that. And so we're going to get one half my base. Now remember, base and height have to be perpendicular. And these both being radii, they have the same value. One half times 10 times 10. So what it looks like to me is uh, 9 goes into 36. We have four times. And we know that 4 is 2 times 2. That simplifies to 2 times 2. And the reason I broke that up is so that I could divide into both of these 10s. So 2 divides into 10 5 times. 2 divides into 10 5 times. And so what I have is for the area of that section, the shaded region bounded by the arc and the chord is going to be uh, 25 pi minus... 2 divides into 1 of these 5, and so that's minus 50. And to show that that's the area as the whole thing, unit squared, and you would put it like that. Keep in mind, you're not going to um, simplify this as, if you were to simplify this, you would be saying 25 times 3.14 minus 50. And so that value here, you would have to multiply these first together, subtract 50, and then you would have an approximate answer, okay? Because approximate, pi is approximately 3.14, where this is an exact answer. So for this example, we know that the measure of angle AOB is 150 degrees. So this is AOB. So this is 150. It says find the lengths of the arcs AB, arc AB. So we want the arc length and arc ADB. So we want that arc length, but we also want this arc length as well, but also the two areas of the sector. So that's quite a bit of work here. So what we're going to do is to find um, the length of the arc AB. So arc length of arc AB. B, you're going to say that's 150 divided by 360 degrees times 2 pi r, r is 6. And so these are going to cancel. 
um, what I'm going to do here is I'm probably going to divide this by 3. So dividing that by 3, I get 5. Dividing this by 3, I get 12. In addition to that, I see that this is 2 times 6, which is 12. And that's going to cancel with this 12 and be 1 here. So the arc AB is just 5 pi. So that's the arc length. To find the arc length of arc ADB, um, you would say, well, if this is 150 degrees, we need to take 360 degrees, subtract 150 degrees. And so we have 210 degrees, and that's the arc that we're talking about, which is this here. So 210 degrees divided by 360 times 2 pi r, r being 6. So these are going to cancel like this. You're going to divide this by 3 again. So 3 goes into 21 7 times. 3 divides into 36 12 times. And again, 2 times 6 is 12. That's going to cancel with this 12. And it looks like I have 7 times pi. So that's going to be 7 pi. Okay. To find the area of the sectors, I may need to move this down a little bit. Okay. To find the area, um, you would say, you would say um, area of the this sector right here is going to be 150 divided by 360 times pi r, r being 6, squared, so 6 times 6. The other one would be the area equals 210 degrees divided by 360 times pi r, 2 pi r times, oh wait, actually, that's pi r squared. 6 times 6. So once I cancel these zeros out, these 6s are going to become 36. This 36 will cancel with those, leaving me 21 pi. So the area of this sector right here is going to equal 21, 21 pi units squared, whereas the area of, let me use red, red sector is going to be, let's see here, let's cut this out. This becomes 36. This be cancels out. And so I have the area of the red section sector is going to be 15 pi units squared. Um, for this problem, again, this is very similar to the one we just did. Find the area bounded by this region. And I'm pretty sure I just did this problem. OK, so we're not going to redo that. So this one says a circle has an area of 160 pi centimeters squared. So here's our circle. And the area for that circle, remember the area is equal to pi r squared. So if it tells me that this is my area, I'm going to put that here. 160 pi centimeters squared is equal to pi r squared. What we know, though, is that my radius squared is equal to 160 and then if I square root this right here, my radius is going to equal, um, this is going to be root 16 times root 10, which is 4 root 10. So my radius is 4 root 10. So this length right here is 4 root 10. So let's see what else they want to know. It says that if the sector of a circle, the sector, which is the shaded area, has an area of 40 pi. So there's my, let's say that this is my sector that they're talking about. And it says that um, the area has a length of 40 pi. So that would mean, if you remember, area equals my arc degree divided by 360 times pi r squared. So they just told me that my area of that section is 40 pi. So 40 pi is equal to my arc degree, um, which we don't know yet, actually. Uh, arc degree over 360 times pi times r squared. Now we know what r squared is. r squared is 160. Okay. Remember up here, r squared was equal to 160 before we um, took the square root of that to find the radius. So what I'm going to do here is I need to find, in order to find the arc length, which is, in order to find the arc length, so arc length is equal to the arc degree over 360 times 2 times pi times r. In order to find the arc length, I actually need 
the arc degree that we're talking about. We don't know what this degree is right in here. So we need to solve for that. So if I divide by pi on both sides, that becomes one. And what I have here is I'm gonna divide by 10, so those zeros cancel out. And then I'm gonna divide by four because I know 36 is actually four times nine. And I know 16 is four times four. So one of my fours is gonna cancel. So what I have is 40 is equal to four A, four times my arc degree over nine. So in order to get the arc degree by itself, I'm gonna divide or multiply by the reciprocal, which is nine fourths, so nine fourths. So my arc degree is going to equal, after these all cancel out and make one, four divides into 40, 10 times, 10 times nine, 90 degrees. So actually, this is a 90 degree angle. So therefore, now when I plug it in here, I'm going to get my arc length is equal, because that's the actual question is gonna equal 90 degrees divided by 360 times two times pi times my radius, which we know is four root 10, so four root 10. So my arc length is equal to, uh, this cancels and makes one fourth, so nine will cancel into that be a four on the denominator. Um, this four will cancel with this four here and make one. So it looks like my arc length is gonna equal 2 pi root 10, and that's units because that's my arc length. All right, cool. Okay, so compare the two areas of the sectors. Um, it They just want you to just see what would happen. If I have, they both have the same central angle, okay? So we'll call that A, and then I said, the one radius is bigger than the other, but they still have the same central angle. So let's say one of the radiuses is 20, radii is twice as long. So we'll call this R and let's call this 2R, but they both have the same arc degree, okay? Comparing uh, same, but the radius, um, compare the areas. So for this one right here, let's see if I can move this down. Nope, hold on one second. So comparing uh, this one right here to this one, all right, we're going to get um, our area is going to be area equals my arc degree over 360 times pi r, this is my r, r squared. So that's just arc degree over 360 times pi r squared, where this area is going to be arc degree over 360 times pi r, but this r is 2 pi, two r squared. So what happens with this is arc angle, or area is equal to arc degree over 360 times pi times 2r times 2r is going to be 4r squared. Now, this 4 is actually going to divide into this 300, 360, and that's going to make 90. So, so what I have, let's see here, um, hold on, let's just do this, okay, maybe not, so what I have here is just um, r squared, or a r squared, so we have area equals arc degree times pi, times r squared, but divided by 90 instead of this divided by 360. So what that did was my fraction of whatever this is is divided by 90 as opposed to 360 degrees. So we're gonna come back to this challenge problem, but for this, and just think about this for a minute, our job is to find the area of this shape right here. So what you would be doing in order to do this, do you see the trapezoid right here? I would find the area of my trapezoid, okay, which is sort of on its side, but this is the trapezoid right here, okay? I would find the area of that trapezoid, and then I would subtract these two sectors, okay? So minus the sector, that sector minus minus this sector here. So if time allots, we're gonna come back to that. But 
onward, we're going to get into the ratio of areas. So this is a really important factor in um, comparing areas of triangles um, because that we do have a formula that does um, compare both of the ratios of the areas. So example one says, if two triangles have the same heights, so if you notice that this height right here is 10 and this height here is 10, they're not the same triangles. But if they have the same height, then the ratio of their areas is equal to the ratio of their bases. So my ratio of the bases would be 12 to 7. If two triangles have equal bases, so if you see how these are both 4, if they have equal bases, then the ratio of their areas is going to equal the ratio of their heights. So that would be 2 to 6. So 2 to 6 would equal 1 to 3. Okay. And lastly, if two triangles are similar, then the ratio of their areas is equal to the square of their skill factor. So I'm not sure if you can see um, these two triangles down here, but this is six and this is nine. So what you would do is you would say, well, what's the skill factor for these two triangles? So the skill factor would be six. If we did small to large, it'd be six to nine, which is two to three. Okay, so my skill factor is two to three. If these two triangles are similar, then the ratio of areas, because your job would to be would, is to find the ratio of their areas, so that's going to be two to three squared. So you would say parentheses two over three quantity squared. So that would be four over nine, and so that would be your your um, ratio of areas. So in conclusion. Basically, you're going to be given a scale factor, whatever it is. Let's say scale factor is A to B, okay, A to B. If your scale factor is, let's say, we'll say 4 to 5, okay, the ratio of your perimeter is also 4 to 5. But the ratio of the areas is going to be 4 to 5 squared. So it would be 4 over 5 quantity squared. And that's going to be 16 over 25 if my if my ratio if my skill factor was four to five. Okay, so let's practice some of that. So we have two triangles. These two triangles are similar. That's important that you know that that the triangles are similar. Because once you have similar triangles, then you know, you can find the scale factor. So I mean, the scale factor for this is we could say if we did this side to this side, that's six to nine, right? Six to nine but that reduces by three, and that's gonna be two to three. So my scale factor is two to three. Remember, I could pick any side. I could say 10 to 15 instead, this side here to this side. And when I reduce that by, let's say five, I'm gonna get two to three again. Or if I say my scale factor is eight, eight to 12, right? Then that also is gonna to reduce to dividing by four, I'm going to get two to three. So any one of the sides that you pick are all going to give you the same scale factor. Now, the ratio of the perimeters is also going to be two to three. Now, I would prove that. I mean, that's just something that I'm telling you. But you should, you should ask to be. It, it, you should ask for me to prove it. So I'm going to prove it. The ratio of the perimeters I'm telling you is two to three. It's the same as the scale factor. But let's just check the perimeter of this triangle is 10 plus 8, which is 18, plus 6, okay, which is 24. And so we know that this perimeter is 24, 2, and then the perimeter of this is going to be 15 plus 12, which is 27, plus 9, which is 36. So 24 to 36 and if I were to reduce that, um, let's see, what would I reduce that by? 12. If I reduce this by 12, I'm going to get 2. And if I reduce this by 12, I'm going to get 3. So my ratio of my perimeters is, in fact, 2 to 3. Likewise, the ratio of the areas, the formula, is the scale factor, which is A over B, squared, which is A squared over B squared. So I'm telling you that if I take, if my scale factor is two to three, and I were to take two to three and I squared that, I'm gonna get two squared over three squared, 
which is four over nine. So again, don't just take my word for it. You know, you want this proved. So remember the ratio of areas. This is a triangle and this is a triangle. The area of the smaller triangle, area is gonna be one half my base times the height. But remember the base and the height, they have to be perpendicular. So it's gonna be one half uh, six times eight. So a half of six is three and three times eight is 24 over. And then the area of this triangle here would be one half my base nine times 12. And then nine divides into 12 six times and nine times six is 54. So let's reduce this. Um, I'm gonna reduce by six. So 24 divided by six uh, is four. So that's four. Divide this by six and I get nine. So therefore the ratio of my areas is four to nine. So if two circles have areas of nine pi and 25 pi, so nine pi and 25 pi, um, let's see. Well, let's just draw two circles. So this circle here, and we have a bigger circle, obviously, and with another radius. So if the area of a circle is pi r squared, and my area was nine pi, so nine pi is equal to pi r squared, your pi's are gonna cancel, and because if you divide pi out, you get one, r squared is equal to nine. So when I square root both sides, I'm gonna get r is equal to three. So the smaller one has a radius of three. Whereas the larger circle, okay, which has an area of 25 pi, so 25 pi is equal to pi r squared. Again, divide out your pi's, so meaning if I divide by pi on both sides, pi's are gonna cancel, they're gone. So I have 25 is equal to radius squared. And if I square root both sides, I get my radius is equal to five. So what is the radius of each circle? Three and five. What is the ratio of their areas of the two circles? So remember, the ratio of the areas is three over five squared. So that's gonna be nine over 25. And again, that powers of um, exponents here, that two goes to both this and that's meaning it would be three, three squared over five squared, um, which is nine over 25. But I actually, had my areas in the very beginning, which said nine pi over 25 pi, pi's are gonna cancel, I still get nine over 25. The ratio of my radii are just is just three to five. So for this problem, it says um, a rectangle has a perimeter of 10 inches. So if my rectangle going around has a perimeter of 10 inches, so the perimeter is equal to 10. If the perimeter of a similar rectangle is 20, so that's gonna be a little bit larger, okay? So that perimeter is gonna equal 20. Um, what is the scale factor between the two, two um, rectangles? Well, the scale factor is gonna be 10 to 20. Because remember, um, my scale factor is the same thing as my um, ratio of perimeters. Scale factor, remember we just talked about this, is equal to A over B, whereas the ratio of perimeters is also A over B. So these are gonna cancel, so what is the scale factor? My scale factor is one half. And so therefore, the scale factor is the same thing as my ratio of perimeters, check. Um, what is the ratio of areas? So the ratio of areas is just one half, squared, which is going to be 1 over 2 times 2, which is 4. Um, so what you would do for this, um, we're going to actually get to um, going around the room. So we have an around the room, which we have some uh, area of the, we have some practice problems. So what is the area of the white region, which is this space in here? Now, this one is a little bit tricky because what I want is everything except this little space right here. So I, I don't want the whole area of the circle. I just want this little white portion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the area of a, the area portion of this, which is 120. It's 
So we have 120 degrees, this being a degree, over 360 degrees times pi r squared. So this is 6 times 6, that's 36, is going to cancel with this 36 here. So what I just found was this portion of the area. So that's going to be 12 pi, okay? And so what happens now is, is the area of this section here is 12 pi, whereas the area of the whole circle is actually pi r squared. So r being 36. So the area of the circle is equal to pi times my radius, 6 squared, so 36. So that's going to be 36 pi. So 36 pi minus 12 pi, okay, makes 24 pi. So that's 24 pi, which is just this area um, minus the sector. So we didn't take away, see this triangle right here? So we still need to take away that triangle in there that we didn't take away yet. So um, instead of taking it away like we would do, we would instead add it because that's what we want. So the area of this um, white region, area of the white region, um, we'll just do this kind of thing here, is equal to this plus the area of this triangle in here. So I'm going to redraw that triangle. So the triangle like this, okay? Keep in mind that if this is 120 right here, when I split this up like that, that's now a 60 degree angle. And this is six, okay, 60 degrees, which makes that 30, and then there's a right angle. Across from the right angle, that equals two A. A is equal to three, A being across from the 30 degree. And then across from the 60 is A root three, or three root three. So this length, remember to find the area of a triangle, it's one half base times height, okay? So in, let me get rid of this thing here. And in finding the base, hold on, let's move this down. Let's get rid of that. So then we have, so then we have 24 pi, whoops. Then we have 24 pi, plus one half my base, which is three root three plus three root three, which makes six root three times the height, which is three. And so let's see, two goes in, divides into six three times and three times three is nine. So what I really have, okay, what I really have is 24 pi plus three times three, nine root three. And remember as a quantity, that's gonna be unit squared. The diagonal of a square is two root six inches, okay? What is the area of the square? Well, the area of the square is just area of a square is equal to side squared. So that's gonna be the side. Well, this is equal to x root two because this is a square. That means these are both equal. That means these are x, x, x root two. If I divide both sides by root two, what I'm gonna get is one here, so that's gonna be x is equal to, um, root two divides into root six root three times, because remember, numbers can be divided by numbers and roots can be divided by roots. So what I have is x is equal to two root three. So that's the length of one side is two root three. So the area is gonna be two root three quantity squared. So that area is gonna be two root three times two root three, which makes four, root nine and the square root of nine is three so the area is going to be four times three which is equal to 12. so that's the area of that square so for this problem it says the bases of an isosceles trapezoid are um, five centimeters and 11 centimeters so if an isosceles trapezoid means two sides are congruent this side's congruent to that the bases are five and eleven and the legs are both five, okay? What is the length of the median? Well, the median, the median is the sum of the bases divided by two. So we have five plus 11 divided by two. 
So my median is going to be 11 plus 5, which is 16, divided by 2, which is 8 centimeters. So that's my median right here, which is 8 centimeters. Now remember, the median connects, is the midpoint, to that side and to this side. But because it's isosceles, they're equal. So this is the length of my median. So what is the height of the trapezoid? So for me to find the height of this trapezoid, okay, remember, because it is isosceles, I can this becomes equal to this length here. If this is 11, then 11 times minus 5 is 6. So we know this length in here is 5. So that means that this length plus this length is 6, which means these are both 3. If that's a 5 and this is a right triangle, that makes my height. Four. So the height of my trapezoid is 4. So what is the area of the trapezoid? Well, remember, the area formula for a trapezoid is height divided by 2 times the sum of the bases. Okay, But also keep in mind that, keep in mind that um, this is another formula is just the median times the height. Because if you think about it, you see this base plus base divided by 2? That's my median. Add the bases divided by 2. That's my median. And so what, I'm, what it really is is just my median times my height. So my medium being 8 centimeters times my height, which is 4 centimeters. So that's going to equal 32 centimeters squared. So the area of my trapezoid is 32 centimeters squared. For this problem right here, it's find the area of an equilateral triangle inscribed in the circle. So they want the area. Remember, for the area is they want all of this space inside. They want the area of that. Now, the circle does have a radius of 6. So that means that don't do this. That's not helpful. When you're making a radius, okay, and you're creating a radius in your triangle because you are trying to find that area, Make sure your radius goes like that to the center. Now keep in mind also, I do have two formulas for um, equilateral triangles. Remember, one of my formulas for the area is one half base times height, where my other formula, because it is um, a regular polygon being an equilateral triangle, I could also say one half apothem times the number of sides times the length of one side. And if you forgot this, you can watch one of the previous videos. Um, so we have the area is equal to one half my base, I don't know, times my height, I don't know. But I do know that it has a radius of six. And what else I know is that because it is equilateral, all the angles are 60 degrees. So when I cut this angle like this, this now is 30 degrees. And this comes down, remember that's my apothem, okay? And that comes down perpendicular. So across from the 90 is equal to 2a, a being what's across from the 30, which also in this case happens to be my apothem. a is then equal to 3. So then across from my um, 60 degrees is going to be 3 root 3. Remember, area of a triangle is the base, so it's this whole length here. So if that's 3 root 3, that's also 3 root 3, which makes my base. 6 root 3. So 1 half my base, which is 6 root 3, times my height. So my height, now this one being, this is a little bit tricky in that my height is, in this case, my median, which is a third, a third, a third. So 3, 3, and 3. So that's 3, 6, 9. So my height is 9 centimeters. So multiplying this out, I'm actually going to divide 2 into 6 first, get rid of that. So 3 times 9 is 27 uh, root 3 units squared. So I could find the area this way. But I want to give you options, and I believe in that. In that, So that, let me show you this other way. So 1 half my apothem, which is this length right here, which is times 3, times the number of sides, that's n, the number of sides, there's three sides to my triangle, this is the sides, and the length of the sides. So the S is the length of the one side. So the length of one side is 6 root 3. So what we have is, um, to divide this 2 into this 6, and that makes 3. 3 times 3 times 3. Numbers get multiplied with numbers. So the area is going to equal 
27 root 3. So another option, again, unit squared. Okay? Um, find the area of a regular hexagon that has a perimeter of 24. So if my perimeter is 24 uh, feet, so perimeter equals 24, um, this being a regular hexagon, we're going to use this formula, area equals one-half my apothem times the number of sides times the length of one side. So again, that's the length of one side. This right here is the number of sides. And this is my apothem. And some people call it an apothem, and some people call it an apothem. Whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. So the apothem goes from the center and it comes straight down perpendicular like that. That's my apothem. I know that because it has a perimeter of 24 and I do have six sides to a hexagon, if I divide 24 by six, um, I'm gonna get four sides, each, each side is four, meaning this little part here is now two. In addition, I'm gonna connect a radius here. That's my radius. What you do need to know with this being a hexagon is that um, the angles in each of these corners here is 120 degrees. Because it is a regular, keyword regular, um, all the angles have to be the same. And if you remember from um, a previous chapter, to find the sum of the angles in a polygon, you would go 180 times n minus 2, okay? If 6 minus 2 is 4, 4 times 180 is 720 degrees. And if you divide that by um, six, right, that's gonna be 120 degrees each, which then means when I draw my radius in, that's 60, okay? And which makes this angle a 30 degree angle and across from the 30 is two, that means across from the 60 is gonna be two root three. And that is actually my apothem, apothem. So my apothem, which is going to be 2 root 3, times the number of sides, we have 6 sides, times the length of one side, which is 4. So the area is going to be, uh, we're going to just cancel this 2 out with this 2 here. Remember, you're not dividing 2 into every one of those terms. You're only dividing 2 into one term. Um, and then it's gone, it's gone. So now you have 6 times 4. Uh, which is 24 times root 3. So we have 24 uh, root 3 units squared. Right? Okay. And that's the area. The diagonal of a rectangle is 2 root 3 inches. So this is going to be 2 root 3. If the height of the rectangle is root 5, so there's root 5, what's the area? Well, it's going to be length times height. Um, to me, this looks like I'm going to need to use Pythagorean theorem. Um, we'll call this x. So in using Pythagorean theorem, because the area of a rectangle, right, is equal to base times height. We have the height, which is root 5, but we don't have the base. So in order to find this base, we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to say root 5 quantity squared plus x squared is equal to 2 root 3. Remember, it's full quantity squared. So root 5 times root 5 is the square root of 25, which is 5, plus x squared is equal to, and then this right here is 2 root 3 times 2 root 3. Numbers get multiplied with numbers. Roots get multiplied with roots. So that's going to be 4 times root 3 times root 3 is the square root of 9, which is 3. So 4 times 3, which is 12. So subtract 5 from 12, so I get x squared is equal to 7, and I'm going to square root both sides, and I get x being the square x being the square root of 7. So now I can find the area of the triangle because it's my base, which is root 7, times my height, which is root 5. And so the area of my rectangle is going to be root 7 times root 5, which is root 35, unit squared. So that's the area of my rectangle. Okay, um, let's just box that up. All right. Um, for this problem, it says the lengths of the diagonals of a rhombus are 10 and 24 inches. So that makes that 5. 
and this 12. Oh, and this looks like a 5, 12, uh, 13 triangle in case we want to know that. Um, what is the perimeter? Well, the perimeter is 13 times 4. So the perimeter is equal to 13 times 4. Okay, 13 times 4, 52. So this is going to be perimeter equals 52 units. And they also want to know uh, the area of the rhombus. Well, the area of a rhombus, where a rhombus has perpendicular diagonals, is equal to one half diagonal one times diagonal two. Well, the first diagonal is um, 10 inches, and the second diagonal is 24 inches. Um, so I'm going to divide two into 24, and that makes 12. So 12 times 10 is 120 units squared, because that's units times units, which makes units squared. So the area of that rhombus is 120 units squared. Um, a circle has a circumference of 30 pi. So whenever it tells me the actual circumference, I'm going to write my formula down. Circumference equals 2 pi r. If they tell me that my circumference is this value, which is 30 pi, that equals 2 pi r. If I divide out my pi's, I'm going to get divide out pi's, those are gone. I get 2 times my radius equals 30. And so my radius is now 15 centimeters. So in order to find the area, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So my area of my circle is going to be pi times 15 times 15. So my area of my circle is equal to 225 pi units squared or centimeters squared in this case. And um, that's it for today. And um, I hope that helped you with the area of sectors, area of sections, and also um, ratio of areas. All right, thanks for watching.